Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Park Center 230 kilovolt electric transmission line and substation community meeting. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your evening to learn more about this project. We have several items on the agenda tonight, but before we get started, I want to go over a few things about WebEx if you're unfamiliar with the platform. Your microphone will remain muted and your video off throughout the presentation. However, you will have an opportunity to ask our project team questions, which I will explain on the next slide. For anyone who may have missed this meeting, it is being recorded and will be posted on the project website. To submit a question, you can use the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen next to the text that says ask. Please be sure to select all panelists and you will be able to type in a question. So feel free to drop a question at any time. However, we will wait until the end of the presentation to answer any questions. If you have a question specific to your property and prefer to talk with us individually, please send us a note in the Q&A chat uh, with your name, your address, and your phone number, and we'll, we will reach out to you directly within a few business days. So now I will ask our project team to turn on their cameras and wave hello as I do introductions. So we have Jerry, our project manager, we have Cheryl with engineering. We have Ken with routing. We have Craig with permitting. We have James with environmental. And we have Brendan with external affairs who will be moderating the Q&A session. And my name is Roxana, I'm in communications and I'll be your host for this evening. So a little bit about our public engagement process. When Dominion Energy identifies a project need and we find a solution, we begin reaching out to the communities early in the project life cycle. So that starts with reaching out to county officials. We also engage with historic preservation and natural resource groups, as well as Native Amer American tribes. We also began reaching out to community members. So you may have seen letters and postcards in the mail, as well as digital and print advertisements. We'll continue to provide the community with updates as the project progresses. And also you can find updates throughout the project on the project website at dominionenergy.com slash park center. To ensure we're all talking about the same thing tonight, I want to go over some foundational elements of the electric grid. So we live and breathe this every day and I never want to assume what people may or may not know. So I want to review what I'll be referring to when I say transmission lines. Electric transmission lines are the high voltage power lines that safely, efficiently, and securely transport high voltage power over long distances from where the power is generated, whether that's a wind or solar facility or traditional source of power generation to a substation that then steps down or lowers the voltage um, that can then be distributed to homes and businesses. So transmission lines are connected and work together to form what we call the, the energy grid. And so tonight we're going to be talking about transmission infrastructure and the grid associated with transmission lines. Across our system, we are constantly evaluating our electric transmission assets and generally there are three forces that drive new infrastructure development, economic growth, aging assets, and addressing mandatory federal reliability criteria standards. But these driving forces are not mutually exclusive. Projects often involve any or a combination of these factors during the course of planning, design, and implementation of a project. This project is needed to ensure that Dominion Energy can maintain reliable service and meet the low growth in Northern Virginia. Specifically, the area has experienced extensive growth and is continuing as the data center industry expands in the area. So this project is needed to meet the load requirements 
and will in turn ensure continued economic growth in the Commonwealth and maintain reliability for the community. As I mentioned, the data center development requires new electric transmission infrastructure. Um, and this project is in Fairfax County. So we are currently planning to build a new substation and double circuit 230 kilovolt electric transmission lines. So again, the proposed project includes a new substation, which we are calling the Park Center substation, which will be located on data center property. The new double circuit 230 kilovolt electric transmission lines will be needed to connect the Park Center substation to an existing transmission line just west of the substation. So new right of way is needed for this project. So how are we gonna do this? Our project team is reviewing three routing options, which you can see on this map. And you can also see the location of the Park Center substation. We'll go into more detail on these route options in the next few slides, um, but this just shows the layout of the area. So you can see the new Park Center substation, and then to the, to the west of that is Route 28, and then a bit further west is the Dulles Airport. You may be wondering, what are these new structures going to look like? So double circuit monopole structures need to be installed and they will be in a weathering steel uh, finish. So they'll be brown in color um, to match the existing transmission line uh, structures that are there today. So the lines that are outside of the substation will be weathering steel and then the structures inside the substation will be galvanized. The average height of the structures is approximately 100 feet, and the average right-of-way needed is approximately 100 feet. And so the images on this slide are examples of double-circuit monopole structures, and so they are not project-specific, but it gives you a good idea of what the structures will look like. So how do we know where the lines are going? How did we determine those three route options? Planning and determining an electric transmission line route is one of the most challenging things. We do at Dominion Energy. We recognize the impact new electric transmission infrastructure has on individuals, on groups, and on municipalities. But there are multiple factors that are considered when deciding where to build new infrastructure. So we always want to be respectful of people's homes and properties and stay close to property boundaries. We co-locate when we can. We also look at constraints, so things like historic and cultural resources, environmental impacts, wetlands, water bodies, and tribal property. Now we will look at um, different photo renderings of the project area. So this overview image shows the existing transmission line in green, more of a lime green color, and the three routes, um, they are on the east side, toward the east of um, Route 28. So the route options are identified in color by blue, yellow, and pink. And all three route options are a little less than or just about a quarter of a mile. You can see the two orange circles. Um, they look like they have a white box in the middle. Uh, these are the viewpoints from where we will see the route options. I do want to mention that while this virtual meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the project website, the actual PowerPoint presentation and these photo renderings will be available on the project website as well. This rendering is looking northeast and shows the existing transmission lines that are out there today. So you can see the weathering steel structures running along Route 28, so the brown structures. And so now we will go through the three routing options from this viewpoint, so looking northeast. This photo rendering displays Route A, the blue route. Again, this is looking northeast. You can see the newly added transmission structures and lines and how they go toward the new Park Center substation. Uh, this route is approximately 1,080 feet. I do wanna mention uh, the substation has a 12 foot mesh fence around it. Um, so it's hard to see in the renderings, but I did want to assure you that, the, that there is a fence around the substation. And as we move through these renderings and 
look at the different viewpoints and route options. I'm going to pause for a little bit just to make sure everyone has enough time to look at the rendering. So now we are viewing route B, the yellow route, and still looking northeast. And this is approximately 575 feet. Moving on to Route C, the pink route, still looking northeast. Uh, this route, option C, is approximately 1,370 feet. So now we are looking at what's existing, but from the southeast viewpoint. So you can see the existing transmission line and uh, the weathering steel structures along Route 28. So this is a viewpoint where we will look at, again, all three route options. And I'll pause briefly again after each one. So here is route A, the blue route. Again, this route is approximately 1,080 feet. Now switching to route B, the yellow route. This route is approximately 575 feet, still looking southeast. And Route C, the pink route. And again, this route is approximately 1,370 feet. Again, in the event that these renderings are too small to see on your screen, um, or perhaps you're dialing in by phone and can't see the screen at all, uh, these renderings as well as the PowerPoint presentation will be available on the project website, dominionenergy.com slash park center in the next few business days. So these are the permits that are typically needed on our electric transmission line projects. The Virginia State Corporation Commission or SEC is the agency that ultimately selects and approves the route. The SEC has jurisdiction over the routing of this transmission line, and we'll need to get subsequent permits after SEC approval. But a little bit about the SEC process. Once we file our application, the SEC will solicit public comments from interested stakeholders. And this process can take anywhere from eight to 12 or 24 months, depending on complications of the project. So in this case, we don't know how long it will take, um, but the SEC will issue its procedural order once we submit our application. And you can see there are various steps along the way in which there are checks and balances in the application, which leads up to a hearing. And at that time, the SEC will hear the evidence and take documents from Dominion. And based on that evidence, the SEC will make a determination on whether or not we proved was the project needed and whether the wrap and whether the route minimizes impacts. So there's still opportunities for public input throughout the SEC process. This is our estimated timeline for this project. We began public outreach in early July of this year, 2022, and we have our virtual community meeting tonight, August 2nd. We will submit our application with the SEC early this fall. And while we don't know for certain, we anticipate a decision from the SEC around early summer 2023. And pending SEC and permit approvals, we estimate that we would start construction in the second quarter of 2024, and that we would wrap up construction in the second quarter of 2025. So that is our estimated timeline. That wraps up the formal presentation. Um, so now we'll go ahead and get to the Q&A session. Um, I'll ask the panelists to all turn on their cameras at this time. Again, the Q&A function is located at the bottom of your screen and you should be able to type in a question. Again, if you have a specific question um, about your property and you want to speak with us individually, uh, please leave your name, address, and phone number. Um, in the Q&A chat, and we can reach out to you directly within a few business days. So now I'm going to turn it over to Brendan, who will moderate our Q&A.
Thanks, Roxana. I do have a question that just came in. Um, it's a question about whether or not we have a preferred route at this time. Ken or Jerry, do you guys want to respond to that? Yes, this is Jerry. Um, typically for Dominion, the preferred route is, um, you know, the shortest distance um, between the transmission lines and the proposed substations. And, but we also have to, to provide other routes. So, um, of course, the preferred route is the shortest distance uh, for Dominion. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Roxana, I don't have any more questions at this time, but again, just a reminder for folks, if you're listening on the phone and you're unable to use the chat feature, uh, if you have any questions, you can also send an email to powerline at dominionenergy.com. And I do have another question here now. Um, how many routes will you use? So do we plan to submit any additional routes from ones that we have shown this evening? Um, I can take that. Um, we have shown three and one will be chosen by the SEC, you know, during our uh, routing. And then there's a add on to that question, um, just asking about the, I guess, uh, general benefit to the community. Can we speak to um, how these transmission lines will uh, support the total area? Hey, Brendan, I'll, I'll add on to that. Um, yes, yeah, so as I mentioned, there is just growth occurring in Northern Virginia and specifically with the data center industry. So by building new infrastructure that creates a you know more reliable energy grid. So everyone would benefit from that. Back to you, Brendan. Thanks, Roxana. I have another question here asking about how noisy or obstructive are the transmission lines? And there's a concern about how close uh, Route A is to one of the residences. Ken or, or Jerry, do you guys want to speak to that? Ken, do you want to take yeah, that? Yeah, I can speak. Um, there is generally no noise associated with um, an operating um, subs, you know, transmission line. And then um, the second part of the question was um, how close it becomes to residents. I take it they're talking about Route A. And of course that is considered in our routing. And of course that makes that less favorable to the SCC, but we do have to, you know, present that as a viable option, you know, when we um, laid this out. We laid out three routes, uh, a direct route, one to the north and one to the south, just to have the options and to play out all the pros and cons. Back to Thanks, you, Brandon. Uh, and again, uh, another question here, who decides the route, the SEC, Ken or Jerry, do you guys wanna to touch on that? James, that might be you as well, speak to that process. Um, I can um, take that, that basically we go through all the various analysis, environmental and um, length, costs, um, different aspects of the route. And we do put them in a chart to see which one has more favorable conditions. And then we, in the routing, you know, state which one we feel is the preferred route and which we consider to be the alternatives. And then we package it and send it to the SEC for their decision and weigh in. Back to you, Brendan. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Roxana, no additional questions at this time. Let's give it just a few more moments. Again, for folks that are listening on the phone and unable to participate in the chat, uh, other than the email, another option to get some more information following this conversation this evening is to visit our website. You can find information on the project at dominionenergy.com slash park center. Yes, and just to um, reiterate, this presentation is being recorded and posted to the project website, as well as the PowerPoint deck, the presentation, and the photo renderings as well.
Um, we will be keeping the community informed on the project, um, any project updates. Like Brendan mentioned, you can always email us if you have any questions at powerline at dominionenergy.com, or you can call us at 888-291-0190. Brendan, are there any more questions? Roxanne, I do not see any more questions at this time. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining. Again, please visit our project website for any updates and a recording of this presentation, dominionenergy.com slash park center. I appreciate everyone taking the time. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you.